grateful for Deborah for that. She's inspired. There's a lot of a lot of truths in what she had to say. Um, one thing that I always tend to focus on, and she touched on it, was that the law is liberating. We find our freedom within the law. It's not an oppression. It's not something that holds us down. But that's what that's where we get our freedom is in that. But anyway, I didn't need that. Either. What I'm going to be talking about is uh, this week's Torah portion. Uh, in the opening verses, we learn about vows. And some people might think that what we say are just words, that words don't matter, sticks and stones can break my bones, but words will never hurt me, that words are basically irrelevant and they're just little things that come out of our mouths. But Torah teaches very much otherwise. Um, you may recall not too long ago I, I spoke on Lashon Hara, or the evil tongue, and how, as the Lord mentioned, that life and death, the power of life and death is in the spoken word. Hashem spoke into existence the entire universe with the word. The spoken word has power. Yeshua spoke life into Lazarus and into the little girl with the power of the spoken word. He spoke that into, into being. Therefore, we must always speak blessings and not curses. Uh, also remember a couple of weeks ago, or was that last week? No, a couple weeks ago. In Balaam, when, in, when the Torah portion of Balak or, or Balaam was, God would not permit him, he was not capable of pronouncing a curse upon the people of Israel. Um, but this week's Parsha is different. Today we learn how we must guard our tongue in a different way. Not about blessings and curses, but about vows, about making promises. So let's begin, if you would please, let's turn to the opening verses of this week's Torah portion, which is Numbers chapter 30, and we will begin in verse 2. Numbers chapter 30, beginning at verse 2. This was our Torah reading for today, and it's also the opening verse of this week's Torah portion. If a man makes a vow to the Lord, or swears an oath to bind himself by some agreement, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceeds out of his mouth. That's pretty serious. That's an old time kind of thing. You know, it, 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 was, it was, has used to be a common virtue that a man's word is his bond. You're bound, that word bond, you're bound by it. Don't say it if you don't mean it. Um, these, it binds, it says, it binds our soul. Our words binds our soul. It's that important. We need to take it very seriously. Words are very important. And we must choose our words wisely and be cautious when making a vow because we are held responsible for keeping it. And as I said, there is power in the spoken word. What we say matters not only when we speak blessings or curses, which we should not do, but also when we make vows or promises. We are bound to keep them. We just read in Numbers, it binds the soul and therefore we are bound to our promises. You have an obligation to keep it. However, in the next verses, it does give some leeway to those who are under the covering of their father or their husband. It gives some relief in that context. Let's read Numbers chapter 30, verses 3 through 5. So just down the page, the next, the next verse, Numbers chapter 30, beginning at verse 3. If a woman makes a vow to the Lord and binds herself by some agreement while in her father's house or in her youth, and if her father hears her vow 
and the agreement by which she has bound herself, and her father holds his peace, then all her vow shall stand. And every agreement with which she has bound herself shall stand. But if her father overrules her on the day that he hears it, then none of her vows nor her agreements by which she has bound herself shall stand, and the Lord will release her because her father has overruled her. She is under the covering, under the protection of her father. And he has said, no, honey, we're not going to do that. If indeed she takes a husband, in the next verses, it, it goes on to say that uh, those same stipulations apply to a husband. A husband has that same ability as a protection over his wife to annul um, ill-thought vows or promises. Um, and we should not we should not take any of this lightly. But also we also take that application and apply it as we are the bride of Messiah. He has the authority to forgive or to loose the bonds of an ill-conceived promise or vow. But he cautions us in Matthew 5, 33 through 37. Let's go ahead and turn there. Matthew chapter 5. Beginning at verse 33. Matthew chapter 5, verse 33. And he says, this is Yeshua speaking, he says, And again you have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not swear falsely, but shall perform your oaths to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all. By heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Nor shall you swear by your head, because you cannot make even one hair white or black. But let your yes be yes, and your no be no. We are bound by our vows and promises, therefore it is best not to make them. There's a, a story in the Midrash where God gets angry with a group of people because they frivol frivolously make promises. And, and they make everything a promise. Saying things such as, I promise that in a few minutes I'm going to walk down those steps. That's unnecessary. Why would you, don't make promises that are unnecessary. Don't make vows that are unnecessary. There's no need to. Rather, let your yes be yes. And you know, we know you don't need to make it a promise. Um, like, uh, for example, hey, are you coming to my party? Yes, I intend to. Or, but I can't make any promises. Or, yes, that is my intention. Try to avoid making promises or vows wherever possible and don't speak in absolutes. My grandmother taught me this principle when I was very young. When asked, this, again I lived with my grandparents for a while so I, I learned some, some older sayings, but whenever she was asked, are you going, hey, you coming to the singing tonight? Are you coming to, to the church tonight? Good Lord's willing and the creek don't rise. 
you know, giving that opportunity to say, I intend to, but there are things that are outside of my control. Do not make vows, do not make promises when there are things beyond your control that can prevent you from keeping those promises. Because we are bound, it says in Scripture, we are bound by our oaths. And yes, as the bride of Messiah, he has the authority to nullify those vows and to forgive us of those vows. But don't make them in the first place. Don't subject yourself to that unnecessarily. Try to avoid making promises and vows and speaking in absolutes whenever possible. There are always things beyond our control, unforeseen things, things that we did not see. It is wise to remember and to acknowledge that things can come up that is out of our control and we should not commit without exception. It's okay to take on responsibilities and obligations, but with the caveat or the understanding that there are things beyond our control that may prohibit us from keeping those commitments. Just like when you take a job. You say, yes, I will be here every day at 8 o'clock. Well, with the understanding that sometimes you call in sick. You know, sometimes you have a wreck on the way to work. Sometimes you, know, you agree to the terms with the caveat that I understand and you understand that on occasion there may be something that will come up. You know, everything that we do, we need to have that caveat or that, that understanding that there are things beyond our control and not to commit ourselves wholly without exception to things that we cannot control. And also remember that you should never, even though we have that blessing, even though we have that covering of Messiah that says that we can be forgiven or that these, these ill thought things can be taken away from us, that doesn't give us a blanket to say, well, we can just say whatever and we'll, you know, that's all that matters, God. It will be forgiven. We can, we can do this plan. How offensive is that to him? You know, just like I said, that the story in the Midrash where he's ma making promises as a frivolous thing. We can't count on that. We, we can't count on it, but we can't make that our foundation. Yeshua said that if you love me, you'll keep my words. And he says, don't make promises. Don't make vows that you can't be sure you're going to keep. And the number one commandment of all is to love the Lord your God with all your heart. So you're commanded not to make vows. You're commanded to love the Lord. So don't mistreat him. You know, don't take it, don't take him for granted and say, I can do whatever he does. He said not to make vows, but it's no big deal. You know, if it happens, it happens. If it don't, it don't. He'll forgive me. Or I'm already forgiven because I've, you know, I've accepted it and I've accepted the Lord, so I've got my in, I'm there, I can do whatever I want to now. We can't do that. We can't live by that. We can't expect that. God says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And Yeshua says, I lay down my life for those whom I love. I lay down my life for my family, for my brothers, my sisters. In that day there will be many who will cry to me, Lord, Lord, depart. And he'll say, depart from me, for I never knew you. The word know, the word knew there, that's a very deep, personal relationship. It's a friendship term. It's, it's not just, it's, it has, it's not the word that means knowledge. It's not, that he's, it's not saying, depart from me or get away from me because I had no knowledge of you. It's saying I didn't have a relationship with you. That relationship indicates trust, and you don't misuse, you don't take advantage of, you don't, you don't burden those whom you love with unnecessary, unnecessarily making vows for him to have to forgive you for. It's not appropriate to make promises for frivolous things totally unnecessarily. So this is a very short teaching, but I wanted just to elaborate on very opening chapter of, of this week's Torah portion, which is vows and promises. So if Holly, if you would come up for one last closing song. If there's anyone here who feels that they have been bound by a promise that they made, ill-intentioned or unintentional or ill-thought or something 
that is holding over you that you need release from, please come forward. Please come down for, for offering. Let someone anoint you with oil. We, as a society, have taken so much for granted. We say things without thought. But remember, there is power in the spoken word. Life and death is in the word. Everything that we do, everything that we say has power. Power over our own lives, power over somebody else's life. It is so important that we always choose to speak blessings and not curses and to not make promises and to not make vows, but rather let your yes be yes and your no be no. And if you feel that, as I said, if you feel that, that you've made a vow, that you've made a promise, or that you have that, that bond over you of a promise that you've made that you need release from, come down and let one of the pastors, one of the elders pray with you. If you have any other need of prayer, it's, it's not just for that. It says any, the scripture says anyone who has need, let them come and the elders will anoint them with a little prayer with them. So please, if you have any need at all, come forward and let uh, someone pray with you. Yeah. 
Elohim Melech HaPulah, Shehekol Nyei Bithero. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, by whose word all things have come to be. Bashem Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen.